Let's suppose I want to work on a project that uses an IR sensor and should display some output. I will consider using microcontrollers as they are suitable and ready-made. Now, there is a project that requires building a computer that is well optimized for my workflow. In this case, it is up to me to choose the memory size, processor, storage, motherboard, etc. In here, I will be using a microprocessor instead of a microcontroller. Talking about SOCs, they are generally used in smartphones. Apart from RAM, ROM and input-output ports, they also have ISPs, that is, image signal processors and modems. SOC has all of the functions of a chipset. Now, there goes the basic difference between microcontrollers, microprocessors and SOCs. Now let's try to understand each of them in a better way. First comes microcontroller. A microcontroller is a compact, low-cost microcomputer designed to do a certain embedded system activities such as displaying microwave information, receiving distant signals and so on. The CPU, memory, serial ports, peripherals and other components make up a generic microcontroller. Now we have a few types when it comes to microcontrollers. They are classified based on their memory, architecture, bits and instruction sets. Let's take a look at the classification based on bit configuration. We have 8-bit microcontrollers, 16-bit and 32-bit microcontrollers. They are also classified into two kinds based on memory arrangement. We have external memory microcontrollers and embedded memory microcontrollers. Now based on the instruction set configuration, we have further two classifications. We have CISC that is Complex Instruction Set Computer and we have RISC that is Reduced Instruction Set Computers. When talking about applications, microcontrollers are frequently utilized in a variety of devices to measure external stimulus, including LEDs, microwave ovens to sense temperature, fire alarms for fire detection, and voltmeter, etc. Now let's talk about microprocessors. A microprocessor is a microcomputer's controlling unit manufactured on, on a tiny chip that can conduct ALU operations and communicate with other devices linked to it. An ALU, register array, and control unit make up a microprocessor. The ALU performs arithmetic and logical operations on data from memory or an input device. The register array is made up of registers with letters such as B, C, D, E, H, L and accumulate. The control unit is in charge of the computer's data and instruction flow. Now let's talk about its types. We have three types. The first one is called Complex Instruction Set Computer or CISC. It is a computer architecture in which a single instruction can do several low-level actions. Next up, we have RISC that is Reduced Instruction Set Computer. This computer architecture is one in which the instructions are simple and designed to be executed rapidly. Lastly, we have explicitly parallel instruction computing, that is EPIC. This allows computers to execute parallel instructions using compilers. Now when it comes to applications, they are generally used in personal computers, laser printers, modems, digital telephones, air reservation systems, medical instruments, and etc. Lastly, let's talk about SOCs, an integrated circuit sometimes known as a chip that integrates all or most of the components of a computer or other electronic system is known as a system on a chip that is SOC, a central processing unit, CPU, memory, input-output ports and secondary storage are nearly usually included together with other components like radio modems and a graphics processing unit that is GPU all on a single substrate or microchip. When talking about types, in general, there are three types of SOCs. Firstly, we have SOCs centered on a microcontroller. Then we have SOCs which are typically seen in mobile phones. They are built around a microprocessor. Lastly, integrated circuit designed specifically for a certain application SOCs made for particular applications that don't fall into any of the previous two categories. When talking about applications, SOCs can be used for any type of computational job. They are, however, most commonly seen in mobile computing devices such as tablets, smartphones, smartwatches, and netbooks, as well as embedded systems and applications where microcontrollers were formerly used. To conclude this, 
I would say that with the rapid increase in the development of all sorts of smart devices, the use cases of microcontrollers, microprocessors, and SOCs are expanding more than ever. Employers are on a constant lookout for people who have the skill to handle such systems. These skills are sought after and can be learned for better career opportunities. So that is it for this video. Happy learning.